An often underrated element of games is the sound design and score, but that can quite often make or break a game. We've already talked about Halo Infinite's gameplay, but now it is time to talk about its sound design and score. In Free for Free's last two installments, they have opted for a very non-traditionally Halo sounding soundtrack. And the reason they went with this approach was to try and separate themselves away from Bungie to make themselves stand out. And this worked to mixed results, with Halo 4 having a very generic sounding sci-fi soundtrack. Not a bad soundtrack, just not really one that had anything that stood out and is recognisable as not only a soundtrack from Halo, but one from particularly Halo 4. But then with Halo 5, they did manage to create a soundtrack that you could recognise a song to be from that game. Kunchaka being a great example. But because Halo Infinite is a spiritual reboot, bringing the franchise back in line with what it was previously in the Bungie era, the soundtrack has followed suit to its benefit. But because Halo Infinite is in a complete 180 back towards the Bungie era, it is still noticeably different to previous games, which now means you automatically have something that people can recognise as Halo, whilst also sounding unique and different, meaning that people will not only recognise it as Halo, but specifically from Halo Infinite. And this creates a association with places, events, and emotions, which then can be used to influence the way people will think about the game. For example, we all remember where we were when we watched the 2018 Halo Infinite engine demo and our reactions to seeing the Chief return in a classic style Mark VI. And now if people freaking use this association, which for the vast majority of players was positive when crafting the soundtrack because now when we hear the automatically at least subconsciously associate whatever is being presented alongside that piano chord with the emotions we were feeling at the time. Perhaps a better example of free for free using a more traditional sounding song but mixing it up enough to make it recognizable and unique would be the rendition of Halo that they used in the gameplay demo. Now with this specific version, they did one simple thing. They replaced the all-male choir with an all-female choir. This wasn't just for the sake of change, unlike a lot of things that Free for Free did previously. This change served a very important purpose. In the demo when they play it, they play it right as John is coming up the elevator and then the camera is panning around to the landscape. And with this more feminine and high pitch rendition of Halo, it still serves to create an air of mystery. The all-male version was very ominous and foreboding, whilst the female version is more inviting and creates a greater sense of wonder within the player. And then finally we have Set a Fire in Your Heart, which is specifically composed for that cutscene. If you listen to it, it's perfectly timed to the beats of Esherim's speech which is really common within movies because obviously there's not going to be very many cuts of the movie so you just need to do one recording and that will be what you need to do for the movie but it's not so common in games games usually there is a significant disconnect between what the player is doing and what the music's actually playing combat evolved for example you have on the mission the silent cartographer when you're making your way up out of the forerunner complex you'll have rock anthem saving the world blaring out whilst you're lost traveling in circles trying to find the exit there are starting to become more and more games like doom for example which are trying to bridge the gap between the player's actions and the score and actually in halo 3 marty did try to do that he'd record little chunks of music and then would slap that in when and where it was needed but these would be triggered by events by the player reaching a certain place it wouldn't be triggered by a player doing an assassination or picking up a certain gun or presence of a certain enemy type. It isn't as dynamic as it is in Doom. Because it's tailor-made and fits the beats, it adds weight and 
backs up what Eshram is saying. It also sounds different to all the other songs throughout the trailer. Because of that, you subconsciously just pay a bit more attention to that because it's you know, it's a break from the norm. You're like, oh, what's this? I hadn't heard of this before. I should probably pay attention. And, and it makes you take note of what's going on. And it will make that scene stand out just that little more which especially for what is seemingly the main antagonist for halo infinite that is what you 100 percent want you don't want a forgettable villain that is probably the worst thing you could have for a villain so anything you can do to make the villain stand out is always a bonus in free for free's latest blog post link in the description they went in depth about halo infinite's sound design and in it they talk about how they went about decluttering the soundscape and the way they went about this is by shortening the sound effects and making it so that if a gun is being fired at you that those shots will be louder than a gun that is being fired beside you by a teammate because obviously it's more important that you as the player know what your opponent is shooting you with than and what your teammate is shooting. I'll put some pictures on the screen of what the old sound effects look like compared to the new shortened sound effects. The shorter ones being from Infinite. They made sure that the sound effect starts with a really aggressive attack and then the audio peaks and then drops off really fast. And this will just mean that a sound effect will hang around for a lot less time than it would have done in the previous two games, which is obviously better because if a shot's been fired and that shot is no longer relevant to the player, player then you don't want that lingering on for more than what is absolutely necessary for that shot to register. Next 3 for Freeze audio team talked about how they will calculate acoustics within the game and that unlike previous games they will actually do a simulation to calculate how the audio should be changed depending on where the source is relative to the player which wasn't done in previous games. In previous games they just have once player is x distance away play sound effect dash 2. On the image on your screen now, the squares are called voxes and it's basically just the hitboxes for the audio simulation. So don't worry, you won't be like stepping on squares, playing like Minecraft basically. It's just there as a simplification to make the maths a bit easier for your computer or console so that you're not running at like 15 frames per second because the computer is trying to work out how sound bounces off this curve. This all just means that sound is now going to sound a bit more realistic than what it did previously. This is pretty standard with quote unquote next gen games is that the advancements are all made under the hood and not really in the graphical department you know like different ai technologies to like up stuff so that you can render everything out at like a really low resolution and then use ai to up it so that it looks like it's 1080p even though it's just rendering at like 420 for example and this is why there isn't such a massive boost in, in graphics because it's all under the hood stuff which for a geek like me that's really cool but the average person that's kind of sucks that there isn't so much of a graphical jump but anyhow we're talking about sound design here not graphics in previous halo games because of their linearity the dev team placed markers to play certain sound effects manually which because halo infinite is to some extent open world that's just gonna take forever if you do that so they just partnered with the graphics team using the same tech as they do to procedurally place trees and all that to also place audio markers which is a picture of all the audio markers on screen for the starting zone that we saw in the gameplay demo like this will be invisible that's just a debug menu option when the player touches this one play water splashes or whatever this system's obviously a bit more complicated than that taking into account stuff like the time of day gameplay states location etc at this point in the devlog there's a sample of all the ambient sound effects that will be within the game yet again link in the description and to me anyway it sounds like there is the flood in it great who doesn't love the flood and to me it sounds like there is a firefight going on against i reckon some forerunner constructs of some description whether these are sentinels or prometheans i i, I don't know they, but they sound they sound very similar to sentinels to me anyway and the flood and also could be some covenant weaponry in there as well, like plasma weapons. But to me, it sounds like there are some forerunner constructs fighting the flood. There's some like really animalistic screeches and stuff and kind of sound effects that scream kind of forerunner uh, weaponry to me, at least. And there's also some stuff that sounds like uh, elevators as well, like the elevators from CE sounds kind of similar to that. There's also some stuff that I imagine is the giant pylon tower things from Combat Evolve, like them firing, it sounds like 
think they're doing that in there. But yeah, I just wanted to quickly touch on that because I thought it'll be interesting to see what sound effects relate to war and what we actually heard there and whether or not it is in fact a teaser for the flood or it's just sound effects coming from ambient wildlife, which is also a possibility, but it just sounds so close to the flood to me. There was also another sound effect that you just simply cannot convince me that it wasn't a banished scarab. Air siren kind of sound to it just before it fires. Anyway, side tangent over. So now we've got all the theory out of the way. What about in practice? How does all these changes actually affect the game in practice? And I think they have 100% achieved the goal that they set out to do, which was to declutter the uh, soundscape, which they 100% have done. You can tell what guns are being fired from where. You can hear character dialogue. By the way, it's sounding great. In the devlog, there's a little story about it. Love that marine line. Really funny. You can hear the vehicles flying over. You can tell what's going on, which Halo 4 and 5, just a mess of noise, which was very problematic. And like the sound effects, themselves are, well, this is the tricky bit. For me personally, ever since Halo 2, the franchise has always been one step forwards, two steps back in the audio department. And what I mean by that is none of the sound effects are bad. It's just there's one or two sound effects in each game that give a hint at what Halo could sound like. For example, the Halo 2 BR is so incredibly good. Everybody loves the Halo 2 BR. And then in Halo 3, the sound effects replace something else, which would be the step back and then the step forwards in Halo 3 that never made a return is the scarp noises. I suppose, you know, there's an argument in Reach they returned, but not all of them, not the full suite. And then Halo 4, the battle rifle legitimately does not sound like a gun to me. It literally sounds like to me someone got a keyboard, plugged it into a synth, bashed out a couple notes in the rhythm of a burst fire gun and called it a day. That's really what it sounds like to me. But then the Halo 4 assault rifle sounds like it does the amount of damage that the assault rifle is described to do in the books. And it, it infuriates me so much that you hear these awesome sound effects and then they never make a return. And then they're replaced with two other sound effects somewhere else in the, the new game that also sound awesome. I can hope one day that this glimpse that we get every now and again is fully realized but anyhow as i said before link in the description for the dev blog really insightful that, that has been my favorite one so far if you could do things youtubers would shut up about that would be very appreciated on the left there's part one of the trilogy of videos i'm doing and i hope you have a wonderful day and goodbye